So she tried to talk one of those kids into taking lessons. She zeroed in on Carol. Her reasoning was that Carol was a musical child. Carol played violin, clarinet, guitar, and had a beautiful singing voice. Still does. So in mom's mind, that meant that Carol should, could, learn piano. Carol disagreed. So mom and dad said that if they went and bought a piano, Carol would play it. Carol caved in and said yes. So mom and dad went shopping and bought a double keyboard organ with foot pedals. The salesperson said it would be easier to learn. Not. Carol could beautifully play and follow a single line she used, but a double keyboard with foot pedals was a whole different ball game. Now that's a salesman. Mom also loved to knit, crochet, do needlepoint and sew. When we were kids, she sewed with a lot of our clothes. Everything except these pants, that is. Something about the zipper fly and Lee not wanting to wear pull-up elastic waist pants to school. So she bought boys pants for him. Mom was an entrepreneur. She started making draperies, no thank you. And even worked not only independently, but for Marshall Fields, which is comparable to today's Nord Nordstrom's. Mom was all about family. When times got tough, Mom stepped up and worked side by side with Dad, helping him with his company. Or she held other jobs, including her linen law store in Monaco, which she owned and ran with Carol. In doing so, she showed us the value of working for what you want. Mom handled the finances, and because of her, we learned the value of the dollar. We had things, not because we were well off, but because Mom was smart with what she had. This includes the cabin. As her family started to move on and away, as families do, Mom kept busy with quilting, and boy, did she quilt. This became her passion. She had a gift for putting colors together. Most everyone in the family benefited from her sewing, even the babies, both grand and great for grandbaby, great and grandbabies. As a side note, mother loved pink and red. Dad loved what he used to have your mom wear red clothing. And as a child, mom always tried to get me to wear red. And I, of course, refused. So today, I wear red. This is for you all. There are so many more stories, cherished moments, and so much more to say. But in the end, Mom went on her own terms and in her own good time. I wish you, I mean, weren't here. I wish you didn't have to say goodbye. But she will be deeply missed because she was deeply loved. Thank you.
I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life. And even though he die, and everyone who has life, and has committed himself to me in faith, shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that after last he will stand upon the earth. After my awakening, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him, who is my friend, and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Daisy. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth. Until, by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We sit for the readings. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Here the reading ends. Let us read together Psalm 130 in your bulletin. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done in this, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, in his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, with him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins.
in reading the book of Revelation. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, and now I'm out of him from God, prepared as a bride born for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from him saying, See the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated at the throne said, See, I am making all new things. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Here ends the reading.
spreads her white sails to the morning breeze and starts for the blue ocean. She is an object of beauty and strength, and I stand and watch her until at length she hangs like a speck of white cloud just where the sea and the sky meet and mingle with each other. Then someone at my side says, there, she's gone. Gone where? Gone from my sight, that is all. She is just as large in mass and spar and hull as ever she was when she left my side, just as able to bear her load of living freight to the place of her destiny. The diminished size is in me, not in her. And just at that moment, someone at my side says, there, she's gone. But there are other eyes watching her coming, and other voices ready to take up the glass out. <coughs> Here she comes. And such is death, that while we say goodbye, and the person sails on to the next life over a gentle sea, rocked and buoyed by the tide, they travel on comforted in the knowledge that our Lord watches over the whole event. We watch the boat gently sail away until it is we who have to leave. Just because we cannot see our friend Daisy anymore, she still exists in the loving arms of God. Daisy is gone from our sight, but she will continue to be loved by us as she was loved when she was here. Such is the life that is long and full of experiences that can be treasured forever. And now, as Daisy's boat has sailed away from those she has left behind, and now she goes to meet with those who are waiting, with God, to welcome her to the other side of that infinite horizon. So as we say goodbye to our sister in Christ, there is Daisy's beloved Leroy, waiting for her with a simple, Welcome home. This poem explores the perspective of a person witnessing a ship departing and reflects on the concept of death. The speaker initially observes the ship as a symbol of beauty and strength, but as it sails away, it gradually diminishes from their sight. The poem's main theme revolves around the idea that the ship's departure, or death, is not a physical disappearance, but rather a change in perception. The writer emphasizes that the ship, like a person who has passed away, still exists in another realm, unseen by the observer, yet seen in its new reality. A reality that suggests the comforting thought that those who have gone are greeted by others in a different place, making the transition a journey of arrival rather than an end. Just as the ship gives us a tangible object to focus on, today's Gospel from John that the family have chosen offers the idea that there are many rooms in the Father's house, and this too is intended to be of great comfort. The Gospel message is one full of promises of eternal life. Jesus says, I am going to prepare a place for you. While it may seem a little simplistic, what Jesus is telling us is that heaven isn't going to fill up 
so that when we arrive, we will be turned away for lack of room. If we abide in Jesus Christ, then the grave will not be the end. For in Jesus, we are assured of sure and certain immortality. Physical death cannot hold any power over the true believer. For when Christ returns again, our bodies will be resurrected just as his is into life everlasting. Having lived the life with and in Christ, we will then be able to bring into proper significance the true meaning of our individual actions here on earth. If we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, only then can we become what God the Father intends us to be. Everlasting life, showered in the goodness of our Lord, protected by his merciful love. This is what the true believer has to look forward to. So as we gather here today in community to remember our sister Daisy, it is important, I think, to recognize that we as Episcopalians view the burial service a little differently than some others might. We view this service as a celebration of life, a long life, well led. And we are brought together in Christ for the purpose of reverent remembrance and memorial. Yet at any time we're confronted with the loss of a loved one, our own conceptions of life and death are challenged. This is human nature. Perhaps even beyond our own control, and despite whatever measure we take to keep outward feelings closely guarded, our earthly-based priorities change. St. Augustine once said, Nothing has contributed more to wean me away from an idle preoccupation with trivial things than the thought of death and the last account. In this regard, it has been said that at every death, at every burial office, at every requiem, we have the assurance of the authentic teaching about life and death, the true Catholic and apostolic faith. This is what helps us in our brokenness and frailty to move onward forever, crawling, to the foot of the cross. May the souls of the faithful departed by the mercy of God rest in peace and may they rise again in glory everlasting. Amen. In the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us stand and proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son and Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
for our sister Daisy. Let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Daisy and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to, into the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows of the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Father of all, we pray to you for Daisy and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May her soul and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Some people will take the bread and not the wine, or if you don't wish to receive either, you're still welcome to come forward for a blessing. Either way, if you're not going to receive one or either, just cross yourself like this. That would be a blessing. The next announcement. Do we have anything to announce to the group as far as what's happening in the rest of the day? Everybody knows what they're doing. Uh, cemetery and then we'll make our way down to the GA uh, cemetery and then we go for the uh, Eastern concert. You know. If you have any questions, see Carol after the service. <laughs> Anything else? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Amen. 
We will say together the post community in prayer, then we will have the commendation at the remains, and then it will be processed to the first. And then I think you have a little snack time by the end. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant Daisy with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, and yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Daisy. Acknowledge her, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeem. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints of heaven. Amen. Amen. 